There's nothing like starting a new project with a clean slate. We'll give you our first impressions of the 2020 F-150 XLT and then we'll take it to the track. See how well this thing handles the braking, slalom, and zero to 60 acceleration tests. Then later on, we're gonna go for a lower look. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Berg. And I'm Mark Christ. And we're in our new project. And speaking of new, it's pretty much a new truck. Well, it's not brand new, but I'm looking at the odometer here. It's got 10,000 miles on it, so. That's new to me. Yeah, this is a 2020 F-150 XLT. And considering it's an XLT, it's pretty well equipped. Yeah, I mean, it's got touch screen, all the, you know, power, everything. That Huge big sunroof. sunroof. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the coolest aspects of this interior on this truck. Yeah, I mean it does have some things that you know you you some people might want to upgrade. You know, like it's got cloth seats, it's two wheel drive. I mean, if we're gonna point out the the negatives, there are a few. Well, the the two wheel drive thing to me is not really a big negative because there's one option on this truck that most trucks don't have. Yeah, and that's a rear locker. Oh yeah. So. For the average person or for the majority of everyone with a truck, if they ever think they need four-wheel drive, sometimes they just need a rear locker. Right. And you're golden. So. Yeah. But but what this truck does have that we're really interested in <laughs> under the hood yeah. is the 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost engine. So the plan for the build, kind of generally speaking, is this is going to be a sport truck. Yep. And I mean, this thing's already pretty sporty out of the gate. In all seriousness, uh, this truck's pretty quick. It's it's quick. Where it needs the improvement would be, you know, in the handling department and, you know, the braking department. Handling, braking, a little bit more power. Yep. Um, maybe some exterior upgrades just to okay. make it personal. Yep. I think we should take this thing out completely stock form the way it is right now and get a baseline. Well, any day I get to come to the track is a good day. Unfortunately for Brandon, he had to stay back at the shop and get some stuff done there. But we're here at Nashville Super Speedway because they're gonna lend us their parking lot to do some testing with our F-150 here. Now this is just gonna be a baseline test because for all the big plans we have for this truck, once we get finished, we're gonna come back out here and then compare the two to see how big improvements we made. So for now, I just need to get behind the wheel and get strapped in, see what this thing will do. Well, the first test we're gonna do is the 60 to zero braking test. That's where we have a desired starting point. I gotta get up to 60 miles per hour, hold it steady as soon as I get to that starting point, which is a cone. I'm gonna start braking as hard as I can. And that distance from the cone to where I come to a complete stop is your 60 to zero braking distance. All right, let's see what this baby will do. Now, I always like to wear my helmet for added safety, though it's not required for these tests. And here's the first run. Let's see what she did. All right, did it look like I started applying the brakes about right there? Pretty close. This may not look impressive, but for a full-size four-door truck, for it to stop that quickly, it's pretty impressive. We're at 25 foot, six inches. So 125 feet and six inches. Now look, looking at that cone from here, that's a, that's a pretty short distance to me for a truck like this to come to a stop. So, and it's still stock, so we're gonna make it better. And on our second attempt, things didn't go so well. Well, it wasn't as good. We lost a whole truck length, at least, there. All right, well, that's 158 and three inches. That's a pretty significant uh, decrease in, uh, or increase in stopping distance. Our third attempt yielded a little better result. 
This leads me to believe this is a little more repeatable than I thought. I think on that last one, what I did was I either was going too fast or I started hitting the brakes too late um, because this is very close to where we started on the first time. Let's give it a shot. Okay, that was 120 and six inches. We need to do another one because we're kind of all over the place. We need to get some more repeatable numbers. And here's run number four. All right, now we're getting some repeatable uh, data here. Looks like we've got three now all within a few feet of each other. It's our 100 foot mark. Okay, that's... Uh, 124 and three inches. So we're within, we've got three within five feet of each other. So I call that good. We we'll use that as a baseline. We'll move on to the next test. We hit Nashville Super Speedway to put our F-150 through some rigid braking and acceleration testing. And we're gonna see how it handles or not handles. We're at Nashville Super Speedway doing some baseline testing on our F-150, and we've already knocked out the 60 to zero braking test, and here are the results. We're throwing away the oddball 158 foot run, and the average stopping distance of the other three runs is 123 feet, five inches. All right, here I go. Next up is the zero to 60 acceleration test. 6.14 seconds. Bet your grandpa's truck can't do that. Here we go again. That was 7.62. I don't know if we're just heat soaked or if, um, that was just too much tire spin, so we'll do one more. You're all good. All right, here we go. We're doing these tests with the traction control on and the locker engaged. Well, that was over eight seconds, so I think we're heat soaked. Um, we did get two in the six second range, so I think we'll call that good, use that as our baseline. Move on to the next test. These are gonna be fun. All right, well, we've got 10 cones set up 18 yards apart in a straight line, and we're gonna do what's called a slalom. Main thing with this is, it shows how the handling is of the truck. To see how much speed you can carry weaving through the cones. The better handling and the more grip you have, the more speed you can carry through the cones. If this was a dump truck, I'd probably be able to maintain about 15 miles per hour through here, maybe less. If it's a Porsche, well, maybe 100 miles an hour. This will fall somewhere in between. Let's see how it does. All right, here we go. The idea here is to maintain your speed. Accelerating and braking will just slow you down. Steady throttle input and staying as tight to the cones as possible is the name of the game. The first run yielded a speed of 26.5 miles per hour. Time for run number two. Let's see if we can make it through any quicker. That one was nearly the same at 26 miles per hour flat. On run number three, I'm using the same technique. If you're going too fast, you'll overshoot your next apex, effectively making the distance longer, which makes your time to make it through the course longer, which actually slows you down. So it's a delicate balance. Run three was at 26.3 miles per hour. On the fourth run, I'm trying to increase my speed just a tad, which requires me to stay closer to the cones so I don't overshoot my next apex. The problem with that technique is, cones get murdered. So I'm throwing that run away. 
So we're gonna take our first three runs and the average of those is 26.27 miles per hour. Not bad for a big old truck. Hi Brandon, hi Mark. Up next, we chat with the CEO of EBC Brakes to see what he thinks about our F-150 upgrades. Well, we got the truck back in the shop and I gotta say it handled pretty good for a heavy crew cab pickup truck. I mean, it, it does have a V6, but it's got turbos, but there's always something we can do to this thing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, there's no, it's no slouch, but no. we've got a long list of things that we wanna do. Um, so before we get to turning a wrench on this truck, we got James from EBC Brakes on the line. James, thanks for joining us. Hi Brandon, hi Mark. Uh, so obviously uh, you and I have worked a lot together over the years, we've done some really cool projects and uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you. And I feel like every time we've always tried to raise the bar a little bit with the projects we do with you guys. And I think this truck is just the next iteration of that. I think it's the next one in line uh, to really represent your product and what Music City Trucks does well. So really looking forward to, uh, to working with you. Yeah, well, thanks, Matt. Well, Trucks is a huge part of our project here at EBC. We, we sell many, many truck parts across the world and particularly in the USA. So we came up with three concepts that we think we're gonna run with. So concept one is more of a traditional stripe, if you wanna say. Well, yeah, it looks awesome, guys. That's just, that's taking out all the chrome. It's looking a lot more modern, black wheels, red bumpers. Not that you call them bumpers, but I do. And then concept two is kind of a throwback to the 80s, early 90s with that three colored wave on the side. I kind of like it. That looks good, I love that. That's, that's modern, it's looking cool. Yeah, I think you'd be pleased to drive that truck around, especially the blacked out windows. And then concept three is kind of like a hot rod scallop. You know, I mean, it, it's gonna be a hot rod truck, so I figured that was appropriate. Uh, Brandon and I each have our favorite of the three. I mean, we like all three, um, but we have our favorites picked out, but without telling you which one's our favorites, uh, what's your favorite, what's your pick? Well, it's gotta be number two for me. I like, the, I, like the, I like the stripes, I like the look of the car, the black wheels, the red, the red body color, and I think the, the lines of the stripes match the type of vehicle it is, type of truck it is. I think that would look cool. What, what is your guy's choice? Well, personally, I like number one, but I like subtle, so um, that's just my favorite. But I definitely do like number two as well. I think it's a really uh, exciting kind of design. And if you're going to SEMA with a truck like this, which we are, you know, you want something that's gonna pop. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not the most subtle person, so number two is my pick as well. I, I like the throwback 80s, 90s stuff, so. I think it's gonna look really appropriate on our truck. Are we gonna give this truck away then, Mark and Brandon? Yeah, when it's done, yes, this thing is gonna be given away to one of our lucky viewers. Uh, so it's very exciting for us to be able to kind of bring this truck from a factory truck on up to a full performance street truck, which obviously the EBC brakes are gonna help us do. And it's gonna look so individual and there's no, not gonna be another truck like it around. No. It'll be one of a kind. I, I know you guys make a lot of performance products, which we've used a lot here in the past. And I know you make truck specific stuff that's good for towing and hauling. Um, this truck's kind of both. Uh, what kind of product do you recommend that we get on this truck? Well, what we're gonna do on the rear of the truck, we're gonna make you some brake lines, some braided stainless steel brake lines. And we're gonna do some uh, grooved rotors for the back, which is a sort of a standard groove rotor. And on the front, we thought what we'd do, we'd give it a bit of an upgrade and have a two-piece floating rotor and also a six-part caliper. I have a two-piece floating here, just like this one. Something like that's gonna go onto it. Yeah, that's awesome. Fully floating. We'll go with the same standard size, I, I think, because it needs to fit in those wheels. Um, if we can do a slight upgrade, maybe, maybe we'll look at that as well. Slight uh, diameter increase. Um, but I think they're gonna, it's going to stop on a dime. Yeah, so we are going to go with some bigger wheels. So if you want to upgrade the brakes to a bigger brake, I mean, that's yeah. always welcome. Well, let's see if we can try and fit a 380 mil in there. And then if not, I mean, I know you guys, you already have pads and rotors for this truck that'll increase its stopping power over stock immensely, right? 
Absolutely, Mark. If you just upgraded with our standard, uh, like a yellow stuff brake pad or our slotted rotor, it will make a huge difference straight away. But we just want to go that one bit further and just make it stop on a dime. Well, James, we're really looking forward to working with you on this build as always and excited to see what you can come up for our F-150 here and definitely want to have you come out and drive the truck when it's all done. Well, that's 100 percent guaranteed I'll be there to have a little play in the truck with you guys. That is uh, always good fun. And thanks very much, guys, uh, Mark and Brandon, your stars. <laughs> thanks, James. Talk to you later. Cheers. Next, Brandon and I rip out the old and lower in the new. You didn't think we were going to do all this work and not use it, did you? We're starting with a two-wheel drive bone stock 2020 F-150 XLT crew cab, which is equipped with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, rated at 375 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque, a well-capable truck. Here's how we're gonna make it better. We're gonna tear out all the stock suspension and replace it with a kit that gets our F-150 lower to the ground. Then of course, add some EVC brakes, pads, and rotors to help bring this hauler to a halt. Then we'll upgrade to a new set of 22 inch wheels and tires. In the bed, we're installing a drawer system for storage, as well as a tonneau cover. Finally, we'll be swapping out some of the shiny bits for some color match body panels and trim pieces. We'll add a ceramic coating, then we'll complete the look with some custom graphics. We're gonna start by removing the front struts, first by unbolting them from the frame up top and from the lower A-arm underneath. To get the struts out, the upper ball joint has to be separated from the knuckle. And with the sway bar link disconnected, the strut is free. Well, since we're gonna be lowering this truck, we don't need these stock struts anymore. What we're gonna be doing is installing this Belltech kit that we got from Summit Racing. Now it'll lower it between one and three and a half inches in the front and four inches in the rear. And what we're gonna do is install these coilovers in the front, which are basically struts with adjustable ride height. And then in the rear, everything else. And as for the front, just bolt these things in. The new coilovers bolt right in the stock location. Let's put the bottom in first. And with those bolted in, we can reassemble the rest of the stock parts. These stock shocks would probably work fine out back, but anytime you lower a vehicle, it's best to have a different shock with the correct amount of travel built in. We'll go ahead and support the pinion because we don't want the axle rolling once we remove the U-bolts. All right, I'll get the other side done and we can move to the rear. Well, we've got the rear end supported. Now back here, it's gonna be a little different than we did in the front. This is a leaf spring stick axle, so we're gonna have to do a flip kit on this. Now we've done that before, but those were a little less traditional. This is gonna show you what you can accomplish with some out of the box parts right out of the Summit catalog. First thing we need to do, remove the shocks. Now it's time to unbolt the leaf springs from the frame, starting with the rear mounts. The next step requires a little cutting, so we're grabbing our Matco Infinium Series 20 volt brushless angle grinder. This cool tool works just like a typical corded four and a half inch grinder, using the same size spindle and with a built-in spindle lock. It's especially convenient because it's lightweight and you don't have to deal with the dreaded power cord. It's capable of 7,000 RPM and it's plenty powerful enough to cut through these leaf spring bolts. But they say about having the right tool for the job, if you want to get the job done right, got to have the right tool. The reason we need to cut the heads off these bolts is because Ford puts the bolts in from the inside out. And the only way to remove them is to remove the exhaust on the passenger side and the fuel tank on the driver's side. And with those bolts out of the way, we can remove the leaf springs. We have to swap out the factory shackle for the shorter one. Just need to unbolt it, bolt the other one in place using the same hardware. What we're gonna do now is install some seat clamps onto the leaves because we need to remove the center bolts and flip them over 
facing the other way because now the axle is going to be sitting on top of the leaves instead of underneath. Next, we'll replace the factory shackle with the shorter ones that came with the kit. The drop brackets bolt into the front leaf spring mounts. Then we can swap out the factory bump stops with the new shorter ones. Now we'll lower the truck, install the leaf springs under the axle, bolt it in place. We'll lower the truck, install the leaf springs under the axle, bolt it in place at the front and rear, install the hardware, and tighten the U-bolts. The new shorter shocks can go in next. Followed by the sway bar. Well, I love lifted and level trucks, but when you lower the right truck, it just looks perfect. I love this one. Brandon, welcome back. Dude. I love a lower truck. <laughs> well, we're not gonna need the steps anymore. And we've got some other things we wanna do to jazz up the exterior, but for now, we're getting there. Well, speaking of the truck looking better, I just brought all the painted parts back. Okay. Uh, got the wheels, got the tires. You wanna go see them? Yeah, let's take a look. We'll see y'all next time. See ya. Oh, yeah. All right, Mark, what's up with the F-150? I know we don't have all the performance parts in. Nope, but we did lower the truck. Yeah. Uh, also picked up all the painted parts last week with the wheels Ooh, and tires. Yeah, we should do that. It's gonna change the look of the truck completely. Yeah. We have everything for the bed. Oh yeah, that drawer system is nice. Yep, and I know you don't wanna hear this, but we're gonna be jazzing up that interior. <sighs> Dude. All right, so that's what we'll do. Put all the painted parts on. Get this truck looking good. Let's do it. Get my shirt on. See you in there. Doing the real work. <laughs> well, guess that's the plan. Yeah, just need to get to work. Where do you want to start? Uh, I think we need to get a handle on the situation. Door handles. Door handles. Okay. Seven or Phillips? Oh. Seven pound hammer. Sounds like you're breaking it, but you're not. But these plastic panels are actually easy to break. <laughs> if you don't take your time. Got two eight millimeters. And make sure to find all the hidden fasteners. Little panel back here. Like the ones behind this panel. Two clips. Oh, there you go. And two more eight mils. It's like the scariest thing, pulling door panels off. Just sounds like you're breaking everything. But you're not. This is the part you do blind. There's one. And you got one more bolt right here. This side. Just need to remove the cable and the handle's off. Now I'm not a chrome guy, so painted to match body panels is all right by me. I mean, just looks better. Clip it in there. Since these are OEM parts we're using, we're just putting it all back together the way it came apart. There we go. There we go. That's it. Now for the mirror. I removed it from the truck so I could get the chrome cover off a little more easily. All right, well, moving on to the mirror cap here. I got the chrome piece that was on here off. Won't go into any details about how I did that. Let's just say I had to use a little bit of brute force. Uh, but even though these pieces that we're changing out are small, they are making subtle changes to the vehicle that 
it's going to help us accomplish the look that we're going for. Let me just get this thing installed here. Well, I can tell you that goes on a lot easier than they come off. Well, we're making some good headway on this thing. Dude, this thing will not start. Uh, what are you doing? You said work on the grill. Grill with an E at the end. I'll admit, that makes a lot more sense than, than cooking right now. Wow. Well, I tell you what, uh, let's do this. And then eat later. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit better of a plan. This shouldn't be too bad though. Don't want to jinx us. There you go. Four screws. I'm loose over here. Just give her a little tug. Great. Oh, Ooh, weird. Hey, we should do the bumper while this is out. Yeah, let's do it. It'd be a lot easier. And with a few bolts, the old bumper comes off. Fresh paint. Oh, don't drop it. And the new one can go on. I like. Oh yeah, this was a good choice. It's amazing how such small pieces can totally change the attitude of your truck. I think that's just it, it just slides in there. Yeah, no, it looks good, no chrome. All body color? Oh yeah, oh, I love it. I like the way it turned out. Yeah, and I'm glad you misunderstood what I said about grill. You know? No, I'm. I was a. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty good cook, so I was really trying to show off for you. Oh yeah, I was excited, no. But, yeah, I can tell. But no, the truck turned out good. Burgers turned out good too. So. For sure they did. I think we should uh, move on to something else on the truck. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh. Coming up, after I take a quick nap, I get decked out with a new storage install. Mm -hmm. Well, we're making some pretty good headway on our F-150 sport truck here. We've got this thing all monochromed out, and then we finished it up with the tailgate handle and the rear bumper. Now it's time to move on to the bed. As you can see, this 10,000 mile truck was used for what trucks are normally used for. Somebody hauled some rock for their driveway here, but it's still in really good shape. It's got the factory spray and bed liner, looks really nice, but we've got some bigger plans for this bed. And that plan includes this deck drawer system. It's the perfect solution to add storage without sacrificing too much of your bed space. And that's because these drawers go underneath the platform. And then this deck actually provides a flat surface in the bed of your truck to keep that bed space while keeping everything safe, secure, and dry. So. The only thing left to do is put the pieces with the parts. First thing we need to install are these brackets for the tie downs on the front of the bed. And the standoffs for the bed system to sit on. Let's see if we can figure out how these ammo cans go. I want the bolt head sticking on the rail side. Install this deck on top. The cool part about this drawer system is that it can hold up to 2,000 pounds on the deck. That way you don't lose the ability to load your bed full of stuff. Look at that. Form fitted. Now to install the driver's side and bolt them together. Oh, what do I think about the deck drawer system? It's a nice platform to lay down on the job. Probably need to get the drawers installed. Oh. All right, next step is to assemble the drawers. Put the brackets in. Do those get a whoosher? Just kind of snug everything in there first. Oops, wrong hole. Just kidding. Loosely put together first.
Yeah, this drawer system's going together pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Just gotta slide this drawer in and put the last wheels on it. Both drawers go in the same way, so you just have to repeat the process. And the cool part is these drawers can hold up to 200 pounds. Now you're getting close to the end. Well, this is our last item to put in our deck drawer system. And let me tell you what, this system was super easy to install. And I like the fact that you keep most of your bed. Plus, can't even see it with the tailgate shut. Up next, Mark and I get crafty with some sweet seat covers. Well, we went ahead and wrapped up our bed upgrades with this tonneau cover that we got from Rough Country. Not only is it, along with our deck system, gonna help keep our cargo nice, safe, and dry, but what's a sport truck without a tonneau cover? Besides, it looks good. It looks good. Now that we're done color matching our exterior, we're gonna tie that theme into the interior, and we're gonna do that with some Covercraft seat covers not only is it going to match our exterior, but it's going to save our seats from wear and tear from some spirited driving. As we've said before about this interior, it's pretty nice, but this cloth upholstery shows everything and it tends to feel a little rough compared to the leather or nice seat covers. Plus, the gray doesn't really fit too well with our red and black theme, so we've got the perfect solution. These seat covers install the same as other Covercraft seat covers you've seen us do here in the shop. The headrests have to come off and the seats have to be folded down. But I'm having some problems with this driver's side rear seat back. Now, that one has a clip right back there. Keep going. That should be. Oh, right here? No, that's a seat. Ooh. Mode. Might look like I'm doing nothing, but I'm actually getting the headrest holes stuck through. The seat back covers just roll on and they're a tight fit, so it takes a little bit of elbow grease to get them on. You know, this reminds me of my punk rock days. A little bit of pleather. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> well, the idea with these is they're supposed to not look like a seat cover. It's supposed to look like seat upholstery. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm, I'm at my wit's end with this, Brando. You want me to get that side? I would love for you to at least come and release it for me. All right, let me, let me go fix your side. <laughs> I'll cover your headrest. Thanks, buddy. Ford didn't make this driver's side rear seat back easy to fold down. Oh, is that it? Boom. Amiga. So, if you've never undone a back seat to a crew cab Ford, this little bar. Oh, you just push up on that? I had my finger on that. Yeah, all you do is that. You made that look so easy, dude. Here's the way I feel about upholstery. It takes a special kind of person, like engine builders. Mm -hmm. Like if you're an engine builder, you don't build entire vehicles and you're not like, that's what you do, you're an engine builder. Yeah. Upholstery guys are the same way. What's different about these is these are built for the DIY person to install, which you know seat covers used to be. Oh, you just throw a piece of canvas over the seat. The, just throw the, the horse, horse blanket on there. Horse blanket on top. Call it good. Once you get the seat covers on, you just have to work the edges into place and strap them down. And the finishing touch is this floor mat. Ooh, look at that. That is really nice. This is a show truck now. Moving on to the front, it's basically rinse and repeat. This is just an industrial trash bag that we use here in the shop in our trash cans. You just slide this over the seat there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You just cover it up completely. And then you can take the seat cover. Because the trash bag is kind of slippery, foam just slides right over it. Get it lined up. Slides down on there. And then once you've done that, the trash bag is you know, easy to tear. So you can reach in here and tear the trash bag into pieces and pull it out in sections so you don't have to leave it in there. It won't make a bunch of weird noise when you sit down in the seat. Pretty cool. Now seat covers get a bad rap, but when you pick the right ones, they're actually really nice. Plus it's gonna save that interior from all the wear and tear of daily use. 
Up next, Mark upgrades our F-150 with some serious stopping power. Let's stop yakking and get it mounted. And I marry our 22-inch wheels with some brand new tires. Woo! Now that looks good. Got it? Yep. Now we're removing these steps from this truck because it's a lower truck and it doesn't need them. And we're almost done with the look of this truck besides the graphics and wheels and tires, which I'm gonna go work on next. While Brandon's getting the tires mounted and balanced on those wheels, I'm gonna be tackling the brakes. As you know, we're teaming up with EBC Brakes on this truck to be giving it away when we're all done. Well, not only that, but it's a sport truck, so it needs some upgraded brakes to go along with the better handling and the more performance that we're adding. So we're gonna be adding some pads and rotors. Just need to get this thing torn down. We're gonna use some deep creep penetrating lubricant here because these rotors like to rust to the hubs, even on newer low mileage trucks like this one. All right, but because we have to compress the pistons back into the caliper, and this is a dual piston caliper, it's more difficult to compress the pistons with it off because you try to compress one and the other one comes back out, not to mention it's a little cumbersome once the caliper's off. So what I like to do is just take a pry bar. Some people use a flathead screwdriver. Stick down in there and get it inside the vent holes of the rotor and then just pry gently, slowly. And what that does is that allows that caliper to move outboard and that pushes the pistons in and it looks like they're fully compressed now. Here's one thing I like to do so this caliper doesn't tug on this brake hose while we've got it set aside is I've just got a little bit of a TIG filler rod here, eighth inch, uh, just kind of bent it up to an S shape. I'm just gonna hang this up here and then I can set the caliper, hang it from it and then that'll just keep it suspended and out of the way while we get the rest of the brake job done. Keep that one a couple threads in so the caliper bracket doesn't flop around while we're loosening this one. Now, when it comes time to pick the right EBC pads and rotors for your ride, you can go to their website and that'll help you determine which ones you need. Now, for us, what we needed were these USR rotors. These are slotted, which actually helps you pull away the brake dust and gases that are created from the braking process. Uh, also, they are geomet coated with this black coating. That's to keep them lasting longer. They're not gonna rust out. And uh, what's great about these two is they're super heavy duty, a lot more heavy duty than even an OEM rotor. So it's gonna provide you, when in conjunction with the right pad, better braking and for a longer period of time. Now for those pads, normally my go-to is the yellow stuff, but for our truck here, since this is a pickup truck and it could be some uh, see some light duty towing and as well as high performance driving. We're going to go with the green stuff pads. Uh, these are actually for uh, lightweight sports cars on the small end and then on the higher end, like with the trucks, heavy duty trucks and light towing, which is exactly what this truck's going to do. Just going to get these rotors installed and get the pads on there and we'll be in business. When you set the rotor on there, sometimes it likes to fall like that. So what I like to do is put a lug nut on there and just run it down to keep that rotor from moving around. And then that'll allow you to put the caliper bracket on and the pads in without the rotor. Put some fresh thread locker on those. It came with red, so that's what I put on there. Let me go grab a torque wrench for those. Well, the torque spec on this is uh, 184. These are some pretty big brakes, though. Ooh, that's a loud click. Time for the pads. That's a good example of that rotor not moving and those pads are just kind of hanging out there.
And that is all there is to it. Ready for some wheels and tires. Now we don't normally show mountain wheels and tires because let's be honest, once you've seen one, you've almost seen them all. But we had to show off our 22 inch Shelby wheels that we got from Holly. And we're gonna be wrapping them in Continentals, Contact Sports, 295 4022s. This is an excellent tire, especially this wide for the street and the track. And they're also quiet because they're full of this uh, foam insulation that they got inside the tire. So let's stop yakking and get it mounted. So these tires aren't a directional tire, so it doesn't matter which side of the vehicle it goes on, but there is an inside and an outside. And see that says inside. And this one is the outside. You just wanna make sure that the tire goes on the way it should. Give it a little bit of soap. Just like that. Now sometimes you have to use the machine on tires that are being a pain, but come on tower, there you go. Had to think about it for a second. Now I know if you guys have seen one of these, this is just a regular old valve stem, but since our truck's a newer vehicle, it's literally got a sensor for everything inside and out. So we had to go get OE style tire pressure sensors from Summit Racing. And all this does is it relays the information of the tire pressure to the truck. It tells it, hey, you know, you need air or, you know, take some out. Um, so we have to get these installed into the wheel before we actually get the wheels installed on the truck. Uh, that way we keep all the lights off the dash and keep the truck happy. Mark, stop right there. Check what this out. Woo! Now that looks good. That's a nice wheel. That's a big wheel. Well, I'm gonna leave this with you. Okay. Because I got some business to take care of. Okay. Um, I'd really like to stay. It's all right, I got it. It's just six bolts or six nuts. Oh, now that's the way a crew cab F-150 is supposed to look. It's got the right stance, the right color, and before you know it, this thing is gonna be out on the streets. Can't wait. Up next, we put a bow on our 2020 F-150 project. What we're gonna be doing today is, is put a long-term protection on it. We give it a ceramic coating that will last for years. We upgrade our exhaust and our OEM air filter and put it to the test at Nashville Super Speedway. James from EBC stops by and takes it on a test drive. And we visit a history-making venue and do something few people get to do. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ, and Brandon's out running some errands. We'll be catching up with him later. Today, we are jumping back on our 2020 F-150 giveaway that we're doing with EBC Brakes. Now, this thing has come a long way from where we started. Check it out. We started with a stock 2020 F-150 XLT. Nothing special, but it does have a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which is cool and all. But we've got some plans to turn this thing into a sweet daily street truck. We lowered the F-150 with coilovers and a flip kit, put on some EBC brakes, threw on a set of 22-inch wheels and tires, added bed storage and seat covers, and even swapped out all the chrome with color match trim and body parts. Well, I absolutely love the way this truck is turning out and the finish line is in sight. And by the end of the show today, we are gonna be putting a bright red bow on this beautiful red truck. And the best of all, when it's all done, it's gonna be given away to one of you folks. Now to make this thing look its best for a long time, uh, we've got Rob here from Sonax USA. Rob, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. We always enjoy your projects. Oh, it's always a pleasure having you guys here. Uh, sometimes we hit you with a curveball, and sometimes it's a, you know, one we just lob right in there. Hopefully this is the lob. Um, this is your typical OEM paint that uh, comes uh, pretty easy to work with and, and uh, you know, the removal of scratches and swirls uh, is typical for what most uh, automobiles are on the road. Now, where are we with it right now? We did a quick buff this morning. 
Uh, what we're going to be doing today is put a long-term protection on it. It's a Sonax ceramic uh, product, uh, three years protection. Uh, very easy to apply, but the durability is really, really good. Now you say ceramic, and to me the dollar signs start popping up. Yeah, I think most people, uh, when they think of that, they think it's it's very expensive. And, and uh, of course, the durability and, and the chemistry that goes behind these products, uh, there's a reason why it is, you know, it is expensive from a professional standpoint. So what we're going to be applying today is our ceramic coating kit, CC36, which really stands for Ceramic Coating 36 Month Protection. What is ceramic coating? So ceramic coating is really exactly what it says it is. It's, it's tiny glass particles that bond together to form a layer of protection. So obviously a ceramic is going to be more durable than a natural wax product that, uh, you know, will start to break down as immediately after you apply it. The true benefit of it is just the durability of it and also the depth of shine and, and the ex extreme gloss that it, it creates. If you apply a booster every six months, you'll get 30, 36 months of protection. So the kit is very simple. It comes with our base coat, number one. So you apply that uh, over the surface as with the truck it is right now. You will apply that over. You'll allow it to cure for about an hour. Uh, and then you come back over with the number two can of base coat. And really what that is is just as something that will lay a, a very smooth final layer over and really brings out that depth of gloss. All right, so what do we need to do to get started? Let's get busy. Oh, okay. So Before applying Sonax ceramic coating, the vehicle needs to be cleaned and wiped down. Step one, the base coat. The can has number one. Use the number one sponge. You simply wrap the microfiber, spray it away from the paint so you don't get any overspray. What we'll do here is we'll work in small little sections, and it is simply as just you're just coating the paint. And I always cross hatch just to make sure that I have full coverage. And the reaction that's happening right now to the paint is, is simple. It's just bonding to the paint. It's leveling the paint. And you're just creating a ceramic layer over the clear coat. I can see it changing. Yep, and you're starting to see the reaction now. So once it reacts, you'll see it flash. Uh, basically that says I've bonded to the paint, wipe me off. Okay. It'll take us probably an hour and a half to two hours to apply the, the entire truck. And it's as simple as that. And we'll just move on to the next section of the, of the, of the paint and, and just keep moving around the truck until we've completed. Wow, you can really feel after you put that second step on how smooth it is and it looks amazing. Yeah, it really finishes it out nice. You do good work. You do good work. Coming up, we had to Nashville Super Speedway for some final testing. Well, I'm not gonna lie, the final product turned out way better than the rendering did. I love the waves and the swoop thing we got going on. Got the wheels and tires on the truck, got it aligned, and there's one last thing we wanna do to this truck, and that's gonna be getting a little bit more air in and out of this engine, which is gonna include a cold air intake, an exhaust system, and throwing a tune on this truck to kind of free up a couple horsepower out of this stock V6. First thing we gotta do is get rid of that OEM intake and replace it with this cold air intake that we got from Summit Racing. There we go. So here's the new intake box. We need to install this inlet in the same holes. Mm -mm. There we go. That is a tight fit. A cover for the air cleaner. Now I usually don't like running an air cleaner, but that's one I'd run. Let's move on to the exhaust. Now to bump up the sound quality on our F-150, we went with this Corsa exhaust muffler back kit that we got from Summit Racing as well. Well, as they say, moment of truth. You want to hear it? Yeah, let's do it. Wow, okay. that's quiet in here. Rev it up. Say done. Well, nothing's ever really done. Well, it's done enough to go to the track. Yeah, let's do it. 
Well, we're back at Nashville Super Speedway. We've got our F-150 here all finished up and we're getting ready to do some more testing with it. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I was able to make it this time. We're pretty much gonna be doing a repeat of last time, 60 to zero, zero to 60, slalom. And with everything we put on the truck, I know it's gonna do better. It better do better. You know, Mark, we did the exhaust. We did the cold air. There's one last thing. Oh, the trifecta. The two. Yep. It was all, right. all yours. I'll handle it. Thank you. Well, for our tuner, we decided to go with the SCT BDX. Uh, this is a handheld tuner that comes preloaded uh, with the tunes for your vehicle. This thing also has Wi-Fi capability, so if you need to update the handheld or if you've got a custom tune, your tuner can send, send the tune to the cloud. You can pull it down, load it into the vehicle. We're just going to use the preloaded tune on our F-150 here. So what this thing does is it takes the factory tune out of the vehicle's computer and it stores it inside the handheld and then it uploads the SCT tune to the vehicle in its place. So you always have your factory tune stored in your handheld if you ever need to put it back to stock for whatever reason. Let's do some testing. Zero to 60. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Six point nine seconds. Second run. A little bit too much wheel spin that time. That was a seven point four. All right, I'm ready for a third run. Yeah, six point seven. Very nice. At least he didn't roach that run. That was 7.4 again. Mm. That's not bad. I think it's just heat soak. The fact that we got two in the sixes is pretty good. You wanna do braking? Yeah, let's do braking. That's a stop. Did you see that? 121 and six inches. You that serious? Somewhere. Look at that. I just that mark right there. Yeah. It's a whole truck length. 104. 104. 10. 104.10. Yeah. There's two things happening today. It's really hot, and the truck's doing better than it did before. I call that a win. All right, 97 feet six inches. What? Not only did it stop in the same spot the first time, but as the they get hot, cold. they get shorter. That's right. Let's do a slalom. Cone, cone, cone. Eleven point eight three minus one, two, three cones. That's six seconds added onto that. 17.83. All right, slalom number two. And. Twelve point two four minus one cone. Okay. I figured it out. Okay. The truck handles so much better now that you don't really know what to do with your hands. A stability control kicked in and I lost, like it cut engine power. So I'm gonna turn Stabilitrack off. Yeah. And try it again. Yeah. Round three. <laughs> we DNF'd that last run, so. Is a clean 12.33. Hmm. So we knocked half a second off the truck. Okay. Overall? Yeah. Here's what we got for our results compared to how the truck did stop. 
The slalom was a bit of a wash, but if you don't count my infractions, the truck was about one mile per hour faster through the cones. Zero to 60 was pretty flat, but it was a hotter day and we did have some traction issues. But where the truck did make noticeable gains was in the braking test. The average of our three good runs stock was 123 feet. The new average, 107 feet, a 16 foot shorter average. Wow. Let's, let's go back to the shop. Find something else to tinker with? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that good. sounds good. Get in, it's hot. Our buddy James from EBC Brake stops by and we even let him hit the open road in our upgraded F-150. Well, it's time to put a bow on our F-150 sport truck and that's gonna be with this Covercraft Form Fit car cover. And uh, they even put the logo on the windshield for us. All right, James, here it is. Wow, it's all covered up, Mark. Well, we, we did that on purpose. Kind of wanted to. Look who hey, it is. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing? <laughs> good, you? Yeah, good to see you. Well, I'm desperate to see this truck. It's been a, a long time coming. It has. And I'm here in person. Look at this beautiful cover with the EBC Brakes logo on as well. Well, it's going to protect the truck, but also it allows us to have this big unveiling for you. So here we go. Let's. Dun, dun, dun. Let me take a look. Wow. The color's so striking. You don't see many 150s in, in this red, do you? It's uh, race red. It's beautiful. Is the color. And there's no chrome. It's all black, which is perfect. It looks so much better with no chrome on. It's a completely different truck. And well, I'm glad we both like the 80s, 90s wave <laughs> yeah. graphics. The truck obviously looks a lot different. You know, we lowered it, which is going to help with the handling. Um, we added some engine upgrades. Uh, you'll see the interior here in a minute. But, uh, you know, upgraded the braking system with the EBC USR rotors and the green stuff pads. And of course we added the graphics and, you know, all of the detail work really brought it all together, so. It does look uh, quite a bit lower. Brandon, how, how much lower is it? It's uh, three and a half inch, inches lower in the front and four inches lower in the rear. So it still has a little bit of a front rake, which yeah. I kind of like. But, but it looks uh, so much better, just that very, just mm -hmm. a small amount And with the lower. 22s on here, it, the proportions look really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy with, with how it turned out. Uh, we do have a couple of, um, couple of surprises for you. Uh, first off, don't you want to go out and go for a ride in the truck? I'd love to go and have a ride. That's my dream. We'll do you one better. You drive. Oh, thanks, Mark. That's awesome. Let's do it. This is kind of a different animal. Now, this is a pickup truck. The thing is, though, this is one of our biggest markets. I mean, American trucks, we sell tons and tons of brake pads for American trucks because literally you can just change the brake pads and have a totally different feel to the car, which is it's like a cheap upgrade, you know, but it works so well. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things that, especially when it comes to people who like to upgrade their performance or people who are just using their truck as a work truck or for towing. But what's, what's great about uh, your products is whether it's a sport truck like this one or if you're gonna be using your truck for towing or working, you guys have a product for that. That's right, and we've just got a new product, Mark, called um, ED Plus, Extra Duty Plus, for the fast trucks and uh, sort of t the heavy towing trucks. Oh. And that's going to be released uh, very, very soon, before SEMA 22. So. Oh, wow. Well, we're going to go to the Grand Ole Opry right now, if you're, if you're up for it. It'll be an uh, interesting experience. Up next, we make history and visit a well-known circle. And we're giving it all away to a lucky viewer. This is going to be cool. Oh, yeah. Well, this is it, James. I don't know uh, if you've ever been here before, but. No, never. This looks incredible, this place. This is the Grand Ole Opry. And let me tell you, it is grand. Wow. This is what Nashville's known for. It's incredible. What an iconic building. Yeah, sure. Nothing is more iconic in Nashville than the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. And we're going to get an up close and personal look. Well, let's go and have a look. The home of country music is the Grand Ole Opry, a weekly live music show in Nashville, Tennessee. 
founded in 1925 by George D. Hay, when his one-hour barn dance show was first heard on WSM Radio and is still the longest-running radio broadcast in U.S. history. All right, right this way. Live. Pretty cool, huh? So this is it. Uh, you can see it's not a really huge venue in scale. It's a really intimate venue. So you get to come see your favorite artist here on a, on a very legendary stage. It's pretty cool. Hey, my buddies from U City Trucks, come on up. Welcome to the home of country music. I've been in your garage. It's about time for you to come to my garage. Drew, welcome, thanks for welcome. Having us. This is James. James. James, nice to see you, Brandon. Good yeah. to see you, buddy. See you. Come on over. I'll show you what's going on here. So this is the, this is the home of country music uh, for nearly a hundred years. Last October, we completed our 5,000th consecutive Saturday night show. Incredible. Uh, it's been here for uh, since the early 70s. The the famous circle that was actually brought from the Ryman, where it was previously a home uh, for almost 50 years before it came here. And it has seen them all. That is Johnny and, and Dolly and Porter and, and, and uh, Garth and Carrie Underwood last week. And then all the new young artists as well. We just inducted uh, Lorna Lena and Carly Pierce into membership in the Opry. And uh, it's just a very exciting place. And I'll just I'll share it with you guys. So this is, this is my garage. Well, thanks for giving us this uh, private viewing, private tour. I have to ask, since I'm standing on the stage here, is it okay for me to stand? It in is okay. Stuff? You can absolutely stand there. There's there's a superstition that you may not ever be invited to be an opera member, but uh, if you don't, you know, if you don't stand there with an instrument, but um, I I don't think that's gonna happen either way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for, not for me. Then, then absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Absolutely. Got a little colder in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel it? <laughs> you, wow. Gives you shivers. Yeah. I know. It's think about that it. Is super cool. Cry. Porter Wagner, all the great creaking. Oh, that's cool. Actually, my favorite show I saw here was uh, Eric Church. He, oh, yeah. He played a, uh, an acoustic set here. He went over by like an hour. All right, James, what do you think? You want to stand where the, where the, where the greats all stand? I'm going to give it a go, Jerry. Indeed. Give it a go. Did you hear that? What you, Why? It's speaking to you? You can feel it. You can feel <laughs> it, man. That is so Incredible. Cool. I guess we all get to go, can we? Please. Now we get that a lot. Yeah, I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So well, is, we've done it all now. Yeah. Can we go outside? We have something Absolutely. to show you. Absolutely. I love this. I mean, trucks and country music go together like, you know. Uh, Greens and cornbread. Yeah, peas and carrots. <laughs> Absolutely. Sunshine and coffee. And um, I got some I want to show you, too. Oh, awesome. All, all right, right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So this thing looks fast sitting still. That is just such a good looking truck. It is race red. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Thank you. So we talk about inside how well country music and trucks go together. You know what else goes together with trucks? A good four-wheeler. You arrive in style and you get on the trail in style. So we want to add this to the package and the giveaway. And this is the whole McGilla here. Wow. Well, I don't know what to say other than thank you. The only thing I can say is I'm just sorry I'm not eligible because <laughs> this is a good looking package. Same. Drew, thank you so much you again. Betcha. Really appreciate it. It was a wonderful time here. We actually have plans. So we're gonna hit the road. We have a road trip. Understandable. Plan. James, get in the passenger great seat. You. This thing, this thing needs to be on the road. Great to see you, Randy. Yeah. Come back and see us soon. Yeah. Thanks, Drew. You bet. We're going on a little pilgrimage. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. <laughs>